this podcast is made possible by all our backers on Patreon. If you want to support It's Super Effective, you can head over to patreon.com slash it's super effective. By becoming a Patreon, you not only support the show, but you get a lot of cool rewards like stickers or our exclusive access to our Slack channel where you can chat and trade and battle with other trainers that also listen to It's Super Effective. If you enjoy what you're listening to and you want to keep enjoying what you're listening to, head over to patreon.com slash it's super effective and support the show. If not, no big deal. These episodes will always be free, but we would appreciate any support if you can. Thanks and enjoy the episode. Welcome to the 198th episode of the Pokemon Podcast. I'm your host, SBJ, and with me today, I have Will. And as you can tell from Steve's jovial introduction, we've already been indulging in the humor in before the humor. we even started recording. <laughs> I've, met, I've mentioned this before, but I've read articles that if you lower and higher your voice, it is more interesting to your listeners. Maybe, um, I, maybe I don't do that. I'm very monotone, I've been told. <laughs> well, I I mean, you have your monotone moments, but uh, I do think there's a certain elasticity missing from your uh, manner of speaking. And I, I mean, did. my intro was up and down, no doubt, unless I'm tone deaf. Well, yes. Yes, you are. <laughs> okay. I, I, I've heard you saying. Oh, uh, we've gotten that out of the way. Uh, we have this podcast, one more podcast, and then episode 200. Uh, skip, pass. <laughs> I'm not ready. I'm not ready for 200. We don't know what we're doing yet. Uh, I don't know if you guys want like a live podcast or... Or an undead podcast. Yeah, or an undead podcast. I think we did a Google Hangout one time. We've done Blog Talk Radio. Maybe we could just do it live on Twitch. Uh, Ooh, Twitch. I enjoy the Twitch. The Twitch is good. Uh, so right off the bat, let's get your feedback. And maybe I'll do a Twitter poll as well. But tweet at Pokemon Podcast and let us know what you want to see for episode 200 or email us, whatever. Before we... So the breakdown of the show today is just we have a little bit of Pokemon news. We have a little bit of Pokemon Podcast news. And then uh, we're going to do some emails no Travis today. I did ask him to be on, and uh, he has Ooh, company. Shade. Throwing shade. <laughs> he has company over, so it's completely understandable. But I try to get him for you guys, just so you know where to direct your hate. At the Travis W. <laughs> At the Travis W. Uh, on Facebook, he is facebook.com slash the Travis W. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, He's never updates. Never updates his Facebook. But I think his Facebook is like he who should not be named or something. Oh yeah, maybe I think you're right. I think you're right. Well, how was your 2015? This is our first podcast of 2016. Well, I mean, 2015 wasn't too great, but uh, <laughs> just I mean, mediocre. I, I we, just, we, I just, we hung out. We went to Gen Con. That was great. Yeah, but you know, you think I started out the year with that mono I caught at your house. And, uh, I mean, it was a slow crawl uphill from there. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how you caught mono from my house because I did not have oh, mono. I know. The mono was detected at your house. <laughs> but still, that just like that was my intro to the year and all the medical issues I had from having mono. And then, but anyways, 2016, getting it all back. Getting it all it's back. It's going to be great. And I've been on vacation for the past two and a half weeks. So Living I am so happy. The dream. <laughs> Uh, nothing new on my end. I just finished recording my other podcast, the Tuesday Night Podcast. Oh, so we no longer have a uh, 
the, what was it? The Christmas Spectacular? Uh, I, I think Alan out. said there was one more left, but uh, I, are they, I, I haven't, I haven't listened to them. Uh, so I I rec- oh, I have. I recommend them. They're very, um, make sure you bring uh, tissues because they're very moving. <laughs> you, w- you will cry at do moments. You have to, uh, do you have to listen to them in order? Uh, they tell no, an overarching. except one of them is like a reverse order with another podcast. So it's kind of like a choose your own adventure thing that you have to pay attention to which page to turn to. But he makes that <laughs> obvious. Oh, okay. Uh, for the one that that's that one. Classic Alan. Yeah, I don't have anything new to report. Did you get any good Christmas presents? Nah. Nah. <laughs> None at all? No. Uh, so Irene was going to get me um, possibly a mixer. Like a mixing board? Yeah. yeah okay. uh, which, you know, I I record myself on a separate track mostly for audio balance issues because when Skype comes in, uh, and if you guys listen to older podcasts, sometimes I'm quieter or higher than the other uh, people who are on. So I've, I've obviously fixed that issue since then. Uh, but I was like, well, if I get a mixer, th- like I can sound better, I guess, but it doesn't overall increase the, like your guys' audio. No, that's even true. If, even if I did a, I don't know the technical term, like the, in out mix where you take the Skype and you direct it into the mixer and then you bring it back out into the headphone jack and because Skype already does its compressions and whatever it does. Um, so I was like, well, if I got a mixer, then I could do like Irene and I could do a podcast together and it would sound really good because we'd both be in the same room. And I was like, well, if it's just two people, the software I use can detect two different USB microphones and, um, that's really not necessary. So then I was like, so gun ho on a mixer that then now I wasn't gun ho on a mixer. And I was like, well, I don't want Irene to pay $200 for a mixer that I probably don't need. That you don't need. You're so practical. <sighs> Always with the practical. You didn't get any Pokemon Christmas? No. Wow. That's like a first. Because last be- year you got like a Pokemon snowman thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I am I, going to Minnesota for Irene's family's Christmas this weekend. Um, so that's why I delayed this current episode. That's why it's coming out Thursday night. And then there will be an episode Monday, Tuesday, because I didn't want to do one because I won't be able to record on Sunday. So it's kind of slightly spaced out more. Um, but yeah, uh, so I might get something Pokemon there, but I doubt it. Yeah, that's too bad. I, di- I didn't get anything Pokemon this year myself, which is very strange. It's the first year I didn't get anything Pokemon. Hmm, what's going on? It was a week, week. Two- 2015 was a week year for Pokemon. Yeah, but this is the 20th anniversary year. Every day I'm looking for that little Easter egg. <laughs> this is it. Let me know. This is it. Uh, I have been feeling the urge to go back to Monster Hunter for Ultimate. Well, let me know. I'm down to hunt, man. I'm, I've, I've, I've hit the destiny burnout again. This is the, just when I'm starting to burn in again. Yeah. This is like the fourth time I've hit burnout. Um, I hit burnout initially after I got Hawk moon and that was after year one. So that was just like two weeks before the taken King came out and then I hit burnout not really burnout, but I stopped playing significantly when Metal Gear Solid Five came out. That is true. That is true. And I stopped playing significantly when Fallout came out. And when I say significantly, I mean only like two weeks. Um, but now, like, I have that same burnout that I've gotten from um, from last year where it's just like there's nothing i have every exotic that i need uh i am at you don't, you don't have that tarantula oh yeah just D- east. i am missing one exotic yes you that are right. i got yep i'm missing one exotic uh which i could chase for i guess i'm i'm at 319 light level i have 320 everything except for a class item my class item is 319 and Holding since you back what Holding you back. Holding me back. So one 
point away from being 320, but there's no point in being 320 because it's no different than 319, uh, and there's no guaranteed way to get a 320 class item. So I mean, I would just be doing what I've been doing for four months. The grind. The grind, yeah. And I want that grind of Monster Hunter because there's things I can chase. That's true. There's monsters to hunt. Yeah, so I'm thinking about getting back into it. I would curious besides if you get back in if there's other people because i do like a full hunting party well we do have the um monster hunter channel in our patreon slack community am so. i not in that i i don't know you don't were like I, I played monster hunter for three days and i prefer <laughs> the monster hunter on wii u so you know monster, uh, i thought about just going back to that but then i was like well if i go back to monster hunter 3 u which is a gorgeous game it looks really good then if Irene starts hunting, we only have one Wii U. So I don't want to buy another Wii U. You have two PS4s, dude. I know. That's the see, that's the problem. <laughs> like we both play Destiny together, which is great. It's fantastic. But like if I just stick to Monster Hunter 4 U, we both can play that. Because the problem with Monster Hunter 3 is you can connect a 3DS and play with the people on Wii U, but then you shut off the ability to play with other people online once that DS has connected to the system. Oh, wow. Yeah. That was, that's like the turnoff there. Um, but yeah. And I did see that preview for Monster Hunter X. Yeah, Monster Hunter, I believe it's called Monster Hunter Cross, I think yes. is the official well, name. Yeah, that's, um, but there's no, uh, announced plan to bring that out in the u.s yet so still right, pl- yeah. value to be had in your monster hunter 4 ultimate yeah that was the other thing was like oh i could just wait for monster hunter x but since the monster hunter game we probably wouldn't get it until next year because they take so long to localize it was almost a year before we got for you off of four but i would love a console based monster hunter well uh monster hunter cross is not console based it is also 3ds yeah yeah that's a bummer, because that game looks real good on Wii U, Monster Hunter 3 at least. Oh, I believe it. Lots of things look good on the Wii U, and I wish they would release <laughs> more games on the Wii U. Yeah. Yeah, can't win them all. Like Pokemon. Pokemon, Pokemon Wii getting, U. I'm getting Pokemon Tournament. True, true. That's good, what, two months? Or they, they haven't announced a date Quarter yet. one, I believe. Well, who's quarters? Are we in Q1 now? Q Q1 of 2016, so... Yeah, but like for my work, it's Q3 right now. But for most other places, it's Q1. So what yeah, is what is TPCI's Qs? Some some people start their first Q in April. Q1 is April. Well, and, I think and, Nintendo said Q1. But when is their Q1? So Nintendo's Q1 for game releases is this time. Oh, hooray! Uh, crisis averted. <laughs> we can take that crisis right into news. We have two news articles for you today. First one actually came out this morning. Animated Pokemon stickers are now available online. On line, not online. What do they do? Oh, wait, online? Like the app. Oh, are they they legal? Yes. L-I-N-E. Line. Uh, I mean, nobody I think it's on in this Android. country uses... Well, very few people in this country <laughs> use Line. Let's think, be honest. I think it's on both iOS and Android. Maybe Windows, I'm not sure. Uh, The press release says, Pokemon Company has released a set of new animated line stickers based on the beloved creature collecting franchise. A total of 24 cute and fun Pokemon stickers are now available on the mobile app featuring fan favorites like Pikachu, Lucario, and Eevee. Fan favorites, Lucario. Hey, people like (laughs) Lucario sometimes. Hey, you can get the full collection for two dollars on the line store it looks like they also have a squirtle a bulbasaur shaman uh wabafet froki ink inkly what's that inky inky inker (laughs) uh chespin and they have a fennekin as well and eevee um well if you're a line user plop down your two dollars and enjoy (laughs) There you go. It's like it's like the one communication platform that I do not use. Yeah, I don't think I've ever used it either. I actually think Line is supported on Apple Watch, and that was like one of the selling points early on. And I was like, ah, I'm not going to get this communication app just because it works on Apple Watch. 
No, I mean, I've, I've used it. I just, there are so few people that I know that use it because it's, I mean, Line is super popular in Japan, but there's so few people in the U.S. that use it that there was just no reason for me to use it. Yeah. And I'm not a fan of stickers in my conversations. Sorry. <laughs> this press release also says, this marks the 20th anniversary for Pokemon and Game Freak. Uh, by celebrating and bringing out the original red, blue, yellow on 3DS on February 27th, Pokemon, ha- po- Pokemon-, Pokemon fans have even more to look forward to in 2016 with Pokemon Go launching on smartphones later this year and the Bando- Bandai Namco Poke-centric fighter Pokemon tournament coming to Wii U this spring. And as we stated before, February 27th is the day they are considering the day for the 20th anniversary. So not only are we getting the digital versions of red, blue and yellow, which by the way, you can pre-order on Amazon. Uh, they are nine 99 each. You can pre-order their pre-order the digital copies. If, if you want the Amazon points, I guess, um, are there such things as Amazon points? Yeah. If you have an Amazon card and you buy things off Amazon, you oh, get like yeah, three points I per guess. dollar. All right. <laughs> and so i would assume that we would get an announcement if not that day sometime that week oh well i mean i was hoping we'd get something before then yeah <sighs> or maybe that month they just do news all month how's about something this month uh, january maybe hmm? i mean they announced x and y on like a january 8th which would be tomorrow but that was also announced that they would be having an announcement and they haven't announced that they're going to have an announcement yet. Well, so <sighs> didn't they also had like a Nintendo direct in January last year, didn't they? I don't ever watch the Nintendo direct because <laughs> they're always on while I'm at work and the, I have well, the kind the of job where you have to pay, Nope. I got to pay attention to my job because there's people there and they're looking at me all the time. Ugh, and then asking the questions. <laughs> Uh, the other bit of news is kind of Pokemon related. Uh, there is a new iOS and Android game based off of the TV show Rick and Morty, which I think is an animated TV show on Adult Swim. Yes, it is for adults. It is called Pocket Mortys. It is a Rick and Morty Pokemon style game coming to the coming to iOS and Android on January 14th. So in exactly one week. I mean, you you if you care about this, you probably already know. But for those of you that don't, uh, it is like the battle system is set up exactly like Pokemon to the point where uh, the HP bars look the same. There's like little Pokeballs. The like battle animation looks the same. The overworld kind of looks like Ruby and Sapphire. It's just like a spoof of Pokemon. And so I don't know anything about the TV show, though, so I can't really speak on its humor or what it tries, well, it's what audience a, it tries to appeal his to. Grandpa. His, his grandpa's a scientist, and then the kid gets, like, sucked into all of the crazy, wacky experiments that the grandpa does. So there you go. Are you, is it, like, adult where it's like, I don't want my kids watching this f- humor? You do not want your children watching Rick and Morty, correct? <laughs> Let's just say just because uh, the grandpa is a grandpa does not mean that he has lost interest in dating. And that is, uh, you know, reflected in the program. So when I think of Adult Swim TV shows, I think of Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Wow. Has that show even on anymore? Has that I don't show been so. on in like 10 years? <laughs> Oh, and that show is definitely not for kids. Not that I didn't see the Aqua Teen Hunger Force movie in the theater. (laughs) I didn't know you were such a big fan at the time. I love me some meat wad. Come on. Master Shake. He's my man. Screw Frylock, though. You know, I really, I hated the show when I first saw it, and then it grew on me, and then I really liked it, and now... I think like a year ago I went back and I was like, oh, I wonder if this still holds up. And I don't think it does. No, no. It's kind of like the opposite for me for Squidbillies. Like I love Squidbillies when I first saw it. And then like over time I was like, no, this is just getting worse and worse and worse. 
Um, I will recommend on Adult Swim, they have something that comes on. I think it's usually uh, after their Friday night stuff. Um, and it's called, of course, every time I try to remember what it is and my brain goes into lockdown, off the air, off the air. And it's just like these like 15-minute art pieces, so worthwhile. Just put that on your TiVo and watch it when you're actually awake. So good. I don't think people have TiVo in 2016. I have a TiVo. What are you talking about? I use a TiVo. <laughs> Says the guy who went to the Aqua Teen Hunger Forks movie. <laughs> Shut up. Dude, RCN <laughs> uses TiVos as their cable boxes. I did not know that. Yeah, TiVo is the superior uh, DVR. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it is. I don't have cable TV, though. I just steal your Hulu. <laughs> Wait a minute. You have a box in my bedroom that taps into my cable TV so that you can watch cable TV. So don't tell me you don't have cable TV. I mean, that's fair. You can and watch I, any cable TV. You you can. It's even attached to a DVR. You can set that DVR to record things. It's an inferior non-TiVo DVR, but still. Wow. I mean, I watch one thing on your 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 cable which is raw which you also watch well i don't watch it in the bedroom um but you know let's let's also be very clear that you got the sling player as like my birthday present so that you could watch my cable uh that's part that's half true i got you the sling box one so i could watch cable two so it is a better sling box than the one you have that is true from what i've been told Yes. And three, I'm pretty sure I got you a giant Cyndaquil for your birthday. No, that was for Christmas. Oh, okay. Ooh, I still need to send you a Christmas present. But don't get, worry, it's see, not. See, I didn't get you related. anything because you went on a rant like a month ago that you hate getting gifts. That is correct. I don't want garbage <laughs> in my house, but I still want to send it out. Which is fine. I didn't get anyone gifts really this year. Oh, well, that's true. There you go. I got oh I got you that sweet Destiny poster. When did I get that for you? Uh, that was also for Christmas. Oh, maybe Cyndaquil was my birthday. Wow. See, I'm a, I'm an old man. My memory's not so. <laughs> you so. probably don't even have that Destiny thing hung up. It is on the wall across from me right now, <laughs> next to my Zerua and Zoroark from Six Forty Nine Monsters. All right, fair, fair. Uh, that's it for regular news. Who would have thought there would be no news for the week of New Year's? I know, the first week of the year. Uh, we have some, uh, PKMN cast related news. Uh, probably not a shock to some of our older listeners, but, uh, this week we got welcomed back to both Midwest Gaming Classic and C2E2. Uh, we've been going to both these shows Pretty much since we started the podcast. Um, so I'll break them down for maybe some of our new listeners. Midwest Gaming Classic takes place in Brookfield, Wisconsin. Uh, it's going to take place this April uh, between the 8th, 9th, and 10th. Uh, if you don't know where Brookfield, Wisconsin is, it is right next to Ma- uh, to Milwaukee. and obviously It's like a little west of Wil- Wil- Milwaukee, right? Yeah, it's like 15 minutes from Milwaukee. Kind of between uh, Milwaukee and Wauwatosa. Uh, no. No, 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 not. Wauwatosa is in between. Yeah, Waukesha. Waukesha. Yeah. Um, so what that is, is is it's more of like a retro gaming show, where that's how it started off. But they have a bunch of pinball machines, like 200, 300, uh, something like that. And they're all free to play. There's no quarters or anything. And then they have rooms with a whole bunch of arcade machines, like Golden Axe and... No, I, I, for some reason, I can only think of Golden Axe. Pac-Man, Dig Dug. Pac-Man, <laughs> Pac-Man Dig Dug. Uh, uh, Streets Donkey of Kong. Rage. Donkey Kong Jr. Donkey Kong Jr. So they burger have... Burger Time. I I don't know if they had a Burger Time, but somebody had a Wreck-It Ralph machine last year. Garbage. If there's no Burger <laughs> Time, close the show down until you get a Burger Time. Burger then... Time is one of the greatest video games ever, but whatever, go on. And then they have a, like they have a bunch of vendors that are selling 64 games and PS2 games and even newer stuff and 
they had like this big board game set up so you can buy board games, play board games. You like give them your driver's license, check out a board game, play that. Uh, they have music. It's it's, it's uh, like a two day expo conference, whatever you want to call it. And so we normally have a room there. And so you can come in and we have normally CRT set up with Pokemon Snap and Pokemon Stadium. And I have that custom built uh, Pokemon pinball uh, machine that I've been bringing in. And we try to do stuff. Um, But the last two years we've partnered with Nintendo and they brought in their reps and they brought in a bunch of 3DS and like a Wii U. And I think... Two years ago, they did Mario Kart. Last year, they did Smash Brothers. And, of course, they have whatever 3DS games are hot at the time. But uh, things might be changing this year. I was talking to the guy who runs it. And they might... So, we've been downstairs every year. But they might move us upstairs into a smaller room. And then separate Nintendo next to us. Because the problem that we definitely saw last year was that nintendo brings in so much foot traffic because of their giveaways that people just go in and out for the giveaways and then it kind of clogs the room to get in and then people start talking in there and all of a sudden there's no space for people who initially came in the room to do the pokemon stuff so not that so it's it's they can't give us a bigger room, which would help. But if they give us two smaller rooms where we're separated but still next to each other, that would help with the flow and the conjecture- congestion that we were suffering last year. Um, so, yeah, that's April 8th, uh, 9th, and 10th. And that takes place in the Sheraton Hotel in Brookfield, Wisconsin. So a lot of people who come out, like Travis... And Kay and David and Saul has all come out. You can stay in the hotel there, which is nice because you can just walk downstairs. Or there's a hotel down the street. Or there's a hotel across the street. But I think it was like $85 for the weekend for the hotel and your tickets to the show. $85 a night? I think so. I think. I'm not not 100%. And I'm sure they probably changed the prices from last year, but... Uh, the other thing we are going to is actually in March, which is funny because Midwest Gaming Classic always used to be before C2E2, but C2E2 slowly moved up and Midwest Gaming Classic slowly pushed back. So they now crisscrossed. So C2E2 is the Comic and Entertainment Expo. Chicago Comic and Entertainment Expo. C2E2. There you go. Two C's, it, two E's. Two C's, two E's. It is March 18th, 19th, and 20th. And uh, we will not have a room there, but I will be hosting a panel, which is about an hour long. And I usually give away a bunch of stuff uh, to everyone who attends the panel. And I'll be uh, doing a live podcast there. So if you've been listening to the show for a couple of years, or even at least for the last year, you've probably heard the Midwest Gaming podcast, or the, I'm sorry, the C2E2 podcast from last year, because I record that live and then I put it up. Um, I put it up on the air, you know, as soon as I can. Uh, but that's always fun. It's uh, another way to meet fans. Obviously, I can meet and talk to fans at Midwest Gaming Classic, but I can also do so in Chicago. If you're closer to that area, I don't know what ticket prices are for that, and I don't know which day my podcast panel will be on or what the topic will be. But just, you know, if you're in the Chicago area, that's probably a really easy way to see the show live and to uh, say hi. And I love meeting and talking with fans in real life because uh it's cool i think the topic should be why is will anderson so cool uh that would be a decent topic well you should come to either one of those either one but not both but not both because i'm not rich that's true i would assume that if you came to midwest gaming classic we'd have more time to do stuff other than con stuff if that makes sense yeah, we go to Buffalo Wild Wings. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, also, C2E2 is, like, obviously, to get a room in Chicago is way more expensive than to get a room in Brookfield. Oh, I'm going to crash on somebody's couch. That's, I mean, that's fine. I have couches of sorts. I also have air mattresses. Mm. Uh, speaking of an air mattress, we are going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we are going to tackle your guys' emails that you have sent in to us.
from our break, and we got some email. Pokemon email. Email. Let's say, remember, high pitches, low pitches. That's right. Email. Email. I'm going to read these in reverse order. I'm just going to do newest to oldest. If I miss your email, I apologize. I don't know why I would have. I try to hit star on all of them, make sure I have them all in the folder, go through. If you want to email us, you can do so at sbj at pkmncast.com or you can just go to pokemonpodcast.com and hit that contact button and uh, fill out the little form and it comes to the same place whatever way you want to do totally cool uh but you can email us about anything if it's about monster hunter or air mattresses or pokemon yeah don't email me at my pkmncast email address because i think the last time i checked that was probably june of 2014 perfect so there you go awesome uh first email here is from joe hey pokemon podcast i am 11 and i started listening to your wonderful podcast as one of the viewers once said i came for the pokemon i stayed for the people i got one of your questions i got one question for you as a beginner trainer i was wondering if i could have advice for buying my very first pokemon game and what would you recommend thank you and keep up the amazing work joe Ooh, I would recommend, ugh, it's tough because I would recommend Pokemon Y, but it's because I'm more, you know, oriented towards evil and obviously Pokemon <laughs> Y is the evil version, um, but probably Pokemon X is probably the better one to go wow. with, especially because if you are like also thinking about trying competitive, then you want to have a Xerneas uh, for the new competitive meta. So it's you might as well go with Pokemon X. But I think either X or Y at this point in time are the best starting points to go with. Yes. I would. <laughs> yes. <laughs> as much as I do not like them, I would almost recommend Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. One of those. Joe, if, if, if you don't know, they re- usually release two versions of game X or Y. The only real difference is which Pokemon on the cover do you want? <laughs> well, no. I mean, there's some Pokemon in X that you can't get in Y. There's some Pokemon in Y yeah. you can't get in X. That's the traditional Pokemon way of, of being. And you have to find some friends to trade with you or I use the ever global link or anything. Which game you're going to get, though? No. Well, mm, that's not th- true. Some I th- people I know. I think the Legendary makes or breaks. Which one you want? Well, yeah. Ultimately. Like, Kyogre is way cooler than Groudon. Uh, not necessarily. (laughs) So, no. But, okay, so my argument for why X and Y is, would be better than Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire is, I I think X and Y are like a rebirth of the game. So they are kind of like for new people to come in and have an introduction to the game. I mean, it's really friendly to somebody who's new. With Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, since it's a remake, it's kind of, there's a nod to, you already know all this stuff. You've already been through this. Yeah. And it's enhancing the experience. But my other argument is also, I I just feel really strongly that whatever new game is going to come out next, whether it be this year or 2018 or whenever it eventually shows up, it's going to be more tied to uh, Kalos and the X and Y region than to Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. So but, it's good preparation for that. That's true. But if if this is like a, uh, a crystal or a platinum or even a black two, white two, it's almost would be disappointing to go back to the world you just went in my opinion that's your opinion and that's garbage because black two white two was amazing it was an amazing sequel to black and white and it was a a thing of beauty to be able to go through unova again and see all the different changes (laughs) and everything that had happened so no so (laughs) i'm not saying you're wrong i i love x and y way more than omega ruby alpha sapphire but if you haven't played any of the games, or very little up to this point, I just think that you're going to get more money's money, m- more worth, more money's worth out of Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire because it is the current game. 
you can get almost all the current promotions there. That's running. true. That's uh, true. Uh, you, you can get so many legendaries out of the mystical regions and everything. From what I've heard, and because uh, I haven't beaten Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, the end game is is much fuller than X and Y. And I only suggest that because as a kid, uh, I understand when like one game is this is what you got for the year, buddy. You better you better put a lot of hours into it, otherwise you're gonna be real bored. So, so if I'm thinking as a kid or somebody younger or somebody who doesn't have like income to throw away like maybe you and I do, uh, they probably want as much gameplay as they could get, and I think there's more in Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I played a heck. Uh, I'd still play my Pokemon Y version, but you're right. And it's also what I was saying for competitive that um, at this point you need Omega Ruby or Alpha Sapphire to be competitive. You're you're not. They're not allowing the X and Y uh, games in the competitive thing anymore. Um, I don't know. It's just there, there's so much water. It's such <laughs> so, a turn off. So I think to break this down for Joe is if this is your like one game for the next six months i would say uh get omega ruby or alpha sapphire and then if you're going to get another pokemon game maybe for christmas you could get the new one coming out whatever that is but we expect that to be announced sometime in the next month or so yeah and actually then if you really like that new one and it is tied to the kalos region then go back and get x and y when it's on discount or something and play through the original story yeah. of the Kalos region. Also, if you have to choose between Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, get Alpha Sapphire because everybody likes the pirates better than they like the Team Magma. Yeah, Nobody and, likes Team Magma. Kyogre is way better. Um, and it's not about Kyogre. It's about Archie. <laughs> and so if if you are the kid where mom and dad gets you a lot of games, uh, then you know I would probably start with X and Y. So that, that would be my advice is if you go through games a lot, probably just get X and Y. But if you're the type of kid and there are a bunch out there that only get like one game every six months, I would do Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire because you're probably going to get – you're probably going to milk that a lot longer. Than yeah, you you're going to get a lot more out of it. That's true. That is true. Um, but awesome question and thank you for listening. Uh, much appreciated. There was that highs and lows. <sighs> <laughs> uh jack writes in hello steve will travis logan or anyone else i did not mention my name is jack from ohio wanted to say i have been a fan for two years and i enjoy every podcast you provide my question is if the people of pokemon added a new pokemon type what would it be uh it's obviously sound type no yes incorrect it has to balance the overbearing fairy type now because fairy has become too powerful. And if you've ever faced my Sylveon with hyper voice, you know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> hmm. Hyper voice would be a sound type move, Will. Understand that. Well, it's my Sylveon that's using it with pixelate and it becomes a fairy type move. So there you go. <laughs> what, <laughs> I don't what know. Is... Sound type just sounds so weird. It's just, I, well, I mean, mm. uh, well, we all thought fairy was going to be love type, and really, it kind of fits that. Uh, what was what? What are the moves? There's there's like a list of moves uh, that all follow a certain. Is it like attract thunderwave? I can't I can't remember. But anyways, <laughs> attract and thunderwave have yeah. nothing to do with each other. There's ones like charm, charm, attract. There baby was like a doll w- eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, besides, besides, there's a set of moves that all like fit a certain type, and then there's there's this last one that would be a like a sound type or a, whatever you want to call it. But then you have you have Pokemon like Loudred and Exploud, and uh, you have moves like Sonic Boom, Growl, Screech, uh, Hyper Voice, Belly Drum, even possibly. Be- Bay Up Belly Drum. There's just, uh, I'm trying to think. There's like so, uh, it's caught off guard by the question because I used to have a good argument for this. But if there were to be another type with the current moves in the game, it would be very easy to turn 
all those moves into sound type moves. And I don't want to. I don't want to hear all this. Well, that'll change the meta. The blah blah blah. Uh, they changed Magnemite to Steel. They've done this stuff before. Oh, they do it all the time. Um, I they change some like they they make widgets and fidgets to you know all the different weaknesses and super effectiveness you, you don't necessarily notice everything because it's so small and gradual but they change that stuff all the time you need to stay on your toes uh, with different releases and generations and everything but i would posit something else i think the question is being asked the wrong way i think the real answer is they're going to remove normal type and there will no longer be a normal type because normal type makes no sense. You're right. Why, like, why would a Pokemon just be normal? So they're going to remove that completely and then categorize everything and possibly add in. Yes, maybe they will add in a new type to replace normal type, but they will, it will just shuffle everything. And anything, all your zigzagoons are going to be something completely different that you have never imagined before. They can be, I mean, you can make zigzagoon like ground, really. Yeah, basically. Thing digs. Speaking speaking of, no joke, speaking of zigzagoon, he said, P.S. Will, I caught a shiny zigzagoon. Can I join the zigzag swag club yet? Uh, yeah, absolutely. If you, um, I mean the, the channel for it's in the Patreon, if you want to do donate that dollar a month. Um, but yeah, all you have to do is go through the initiation ritual. <laughs> uh, then he said, stay awesome, Jack. Uh, another great question. What else we have here? Uh, Jordan writes in. Hey guys, new to the podcast and quickly becoming a fan. Now I have been able to get back into Pokemon and my last game I really played was Pearl when it was first released. All these people with uh, playing all their games. I want to try to play more competitively. Any recommendations on how to get started? I was mainly going to focus on Dragon, Fairy, Dark, Psychic, Steel, and Ice. Or possibly mix Psychic, Steel or something. Do moves like Eevees and I do moves matter or Eevees and Ivies? Just any tips or tricks would help. Thanks, guys, and happy new year. Oh Jordan. boy, it all matters. This is a loaded question. Uh, it all so, matters. So if 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 you played the last game you really played was Pearl. Um, if you're playing competitively, you need Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire at this point. At least for the rest of this year and early next year, that's going to be the the main format to uh, yeah ab- absolutely and through december 2016 any um, actual legit competitive pokemon competitions will be held in omega ruby alpha sapphire period yeah uh as, as for the the types you listed i think they're all fine uh my inner travis would say not a lot of people use ice type uh, because there's a lot of weaknesses, but that's not to say they don't. Pokemon don't have ice type moves. Uh, do Eevees and Ivies matter? Yes. Uh, if you're playing competitively, you're probably going to have to ditto farm and get a bunch of dittos that match Ivies that you care about. Um, no, no, no. You just get a six IV ditto. You just need one. Uh, yeah, because it has all six IVs. So. Oh. Okay. And you can just breed for for perfect. Or as many IVs as you need over time. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it's easy enough to get a six IV ditto. And then EVs uh, would be a, a bit easier than IVs. You can just, whatever, if you want to increase speed and HP, you f- can find certain areas on the map to battle Pokemon to make that happen. Yeah, you look up uh, horde battles for EVs, and uh, there's like uh, so many web pages out there that tell you where to find the hordes that you need for specific EVs, and it takes like 10 minutes. Yeah. We should probably do a podcast in the near future about just like a refresher uh, for competitiveness and EVs and IVs and stuff. What does it all mean? <laughs> but yeah, we, we, your, your starting place is going to be Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, whichever one of those games you have. If you don't already have them, X and Y is not going to cut it competitively. Uh, and not to pimp the Patreon, but <laughs> if you're a Patreon backer, uh, we have a channel for trading and breeding, and we have a lot of generous people there that will get you those dittos uh, and help you build a team. 
Yeah, we also have a battles channel. So it's like people who want to just have random battles. You can just practice, um, but also discuss uh, some strategies and things that you might want to try. Everybody's willing to help. Um, but also, if you <laughs> yeah. have a uh, local Pokemon League, um, you might want to look up if, if doing things in person with people is more your your style and, and see if you can go to a league. I go to a, a local one here in D.C. I try to go uh, on the occasional Saturdays, and it's very um, video game oriented. So uh, it helps a lot just to get practice battles in and do fun stuff with actual people in the room versus trying to do everything over the Internet. Yep. Uh, next person that writes in is Paul. Hey, I love the podcast. My only request is that you guys put out more articles. Besides that, I really love the show. Keep it up. Thanks. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I totally agree, Paul. Uh, the, the problem is, and not that I'm trying to make excuses, is I'm the only one that really uh, contributes any content to the website. And... So far, I've only posted podcast episodes, and I've been really bad at that. I have to, my goal before the end of the month is to make sure every episode is archived on the site itself. And the other thing I post is just the official Pokemon press releases that are sent to me by the companies who write the press releases. So if I get, uh, like I have one in my inbox for XY Breakpoint expansion, and it has the assets with the art of the new cards and stuff and so that's that stuff normally gets posted as for like original stuff that's where it's difficult because you know you go through the process of hey do you want to write for the site and people send in stuff and you wait through if it's good or not and then people's life changes like they're probably wanting to write and would love to write now because it's winter break for a lot of people but then all of a sudden you know college hits and they're still writing and then all of a sudden uh, midterms come up and then finals come up and they just stop writing uh so i could go through the whole process again do you want to write for us uh and then it starts over so it's it's like the, the site doesn't really make any money the show doesn't really make any money you could you could argue well you're getting money now because of the patreon but like my last Patreon payout was I think like $280 and just this December I had to renew the Squarespace hosting for the year and that was $253 and it was like okay well I got 20 bucks what should I do I got to pay for shipping to send these stickers out by the way uh the next batch of stickers will go out I just didn't want to send them before Christmas because they were they would have got lost with all the mail going up before Christmas. So I will send them out. Uh, so it's not like I could pay an editor. But if for whatever reason you have an interest of writing and providing content to the site. You're more than welcome to uh, contact me. I just think as as for like hard hitting Pokemon news. Other sites do that better. So like yeah I'll post the information. But like you'll probably see the news on Bulbapedia first or on Cerebi or somewhere else because they have a staff of, you know, 20, 30 people that are writing different articles. Yeah. I um used to do that Pokemon of the Week article, but it just got weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's only so much you can, like, I mean, we do Pokemon of the Week at the end of the episode, and we're, that's like usually three of us talking about a specific Pokemon and what we like and what our opinions, and then we do the move set for you guys, and most of that would get reiterated on the web. If not, you could probably find that if you looked for it. Maybe not for Farfetch, because no one likes Farfetch except me. Uh, but thanks for the question. Yeah, uh, I do plan on providing more content to the site though this year. So if uh, if you like that, just keep checking uh, checking the website. Michael writes in, hey, Pokemon podcast. My question is, if Nintendo and the Pokemon Company made a live action Pokemon movie. Who would you want to be the main character uh, for Ash slash Red, and why? Thanks for reading my email. Who would be the like which actor? Do you yeah, think? which actor would be Ash hmm. or Red? I think if they were going to do a live action Pokemon movie, they actually would depart from that traditional um, young Pokemon trainer 
aspect and and possibly take look take a look at it from a different angle. Maybe maybe have a young adult as the Pokemon trainer, but I don't think it's going to be in an Ash slash slash Red kind of thing. It'd probably be a movie where like the person doesn't realize they're the chosen one, and then they like over time. <laughs> Because they become well, maybe that is the ash red slash. <laughs> like uh, like uh, Michael, Sorry. is it Michael Sarah? No, no more movies for him. Well, oh, I, well, no, the last movie I've seen him in, I think, was like Scott Pilgrim. Okay, do you want to understand the words that you just said? I, I have every Scott Pilgrim comic book. I I have them. They're all. good. No, I will not read the last one because I was so upset that they cast him as Scott Pilgrim when he is so not what Scott Pilgrim is supposed to be. I'm like, I'm not even going to read the last comic book. I don't want to know how this story ends. I want nothing to do with you anymore. It was an absolute divorce. Wait, did you see the movie? No. Oh, because the movie ending is very different than the book ending. But the fact is he is no Scott Pilgrim. Scott Pilgrim is supposed to be a cutie. He's supposed to be a little cutie, somebody that you instantly fall in love with because he's so cute and lovable. Michael Sarah is a dude. <laughs> no, I, 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 I'm. The question is a good question. I'm not the best person to ask because I don't follow. Well, who's a good young adult actor who could fill that role? Um, I mean, I wouldn't. Uh, who's the 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 girl that plays the Hunger Games? No, nah, she's too old. Is she? Yeah, ah, she looks pretty young in the Hunger Games. Nah, yeah, but she's still like teen. I'm looking for somebody who's like maybe like between ten and fifteen. I think. How How's about really, um, like ten to fifteen year old like good actors? How's about uh, Will Smith's kid? Nah. Um, Will Smith barely makes the cut for actor. What do you mean? Will Smith is awesome. He's not that good. Oh, he's so he's good. He's fine. Like, he's fine in all the men in blacks. But... Yeah, you're right. He's fine. That's true. <laughs> That's the truest thing you've said all night. The, the problem oh. with Will Smith is he's Will Smith. It's hard for me to, like, see him as anyone but Will Smith. Other than the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? He's what about Will Smith? I, I mean, Jaden, he's Will Smith Jaden is his son, right? Jaden Smith. Yeah. He could be the the protagonist of a Pokemon movie. Um, I don't know because there wasn't any, there weren't any kids in the star this Star Wars movie. The problem is like a lot, a lot of like fifteen, sixteen year old kids look much older. Just look at the Harry Potter movies. Daniel Radcliffe looked like a uh, six year old in the first movie, and then he looked like a seven year old in the second movie, and then all of a sudden he looked like he was fifteen in the third movie. Yeah. Even though- Ugh. How's about Daniel Radcliffe? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right. Question answered. Yeah, I don't. I don't go to. I don't watch enough uh, films to to know who the like the the good young a- actors are. But it would have to be. Um, I, I just. I, I think definitely. You know, some young person, some somebody we haven't heard of that can break out. Yeah. The next time we uh, interview Jake Paik, we'll ask him. I'm sure well, he's familiar <laughs> with the youth community. Sure he is. Of actors. Uh, Henry writes in, hey, Steve, Travis, Will, Micah, Logan, etc. Hey, this is Henry, and I wrote in a while ago, and you read my email. So anyways, lately, I haven't really been playing Pokemon because there are no new games, and I've put about 350 hours on my X and Alpha Sapphire copy, not, continuing the, not counting the time I've played on Pokemon Showdown. So I've been a bit burnt out, but I hope a new game will hype me up again. Don't get me wrong, I still play Pokemon, just not as much as I did last year. So this brings me to my question. What do you play when you're not playing Pokemon, Destiny, or board games? Let's see, he knows us. <laughs> uh, if you are playing anything at all, I don't really play any video games outside of Pokemon that much, but I do play mobile games, Puzzles and Dragons, just a few things before I go. Uh... Oh, okay. Just a few things before I go. Togepi Lover is Lord, and I've never seen Red Vines, even though I live in Michigan, which I think they are popular. I also listen to the Tuesday Night Podcast. Sorry, this email is kind of long, but if your podcast is too short, you can read it. Keep up the good work. <laughs> he knows us from start to finish, Will. Wow. Uh, they sell Red Vines at Target or Walmart or Walgreens or CVS. Meyer? I feel like... One of those four stores have to exist in every state. Uh, they do not sell red wines at the CVS in D.C. Do they not? 
No. Oh, man. Uh, so I played uh, Pokemon Shuffle well after the Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire craze. Um, I even put money into that before it burnt me out. I played a little Pokemon Per Cross, and I think you guys all heard my complaints with that. I'm still playing Picross every day. <laughs> uh, you are correct in playing a lot of Destiny, but I talked earlier that I was getting burned out on that. Um, what do I play besides that? Uh, I try a lot of stuff. I do a lot of the like the free PlayStation Plus games, and at least give them some time of light, whether that's ten minutes or an hour or a couple hours, depending. Uh, if it fits my taste, I put a lot of time into Metal Gear Solid Five, um, and I was actually thinking about going back to it later this week because I never finished it. But yeah, that, that's that's me. I, I I play a lot of stuff. I played Undertale uh, recently, and I, I finished that. Yeah, I can't I can't say for myself because I don't have as much time to video game, and unlike Steve, I don't. Um, like if I spend money on a video game, then I want to do everything in it because money is <laughs> precious and not to be thrown away. I'm like, like my, my perfect example is one game that I bought, um, dying light, which is not bad. It's, it's a good zombie game, but it was, you know, a $60 triple a game or whatever they call it. And I played it for maybe 12 hours and never went back to it. I and think 12 I'd hours. Like, <clears throat> 12 hours for 60 dollars is, is fine that's five dollars an hour no 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 i mean you can't you can't judge all games like that like i've i've put like bought like an uncharted game or something for 60 dollars and you know beat it in eight hours Ooh, is that is that uncharted collection a, a good thing because i got like 60 dollars in sony cash to spend on some stupid game uh i think uncharted 4 bill will be really good so if you want the whole story then yes what about the collection oh the, okay okay yeah if you, if you have the intent of if, of if you are interested in uncharted 4 then yes i think the collection is worth it and uh, I would recommend avoiding Persona. Absolutely. <laughs> I've, not, I, not good. I think Uncharted 1 is great. You, there, The twist is kind of dumb, but kind of cool. Uncharted 2 is amazing. It's even better. Uh, the twist is predictable based off of what the twist was in Uncharted 1. Uh, but the end boss battle is a bunch of bs and it is extremely frustrating uh just gameplay wise and i don't remember the end of uncharted 3 but it was good it was fine it's they're they're all pretty similar my only problem is if you get the uncharted collection you might get burnt out playing all three games in a row because each game is like eight to ten hours hmm that's a lot of hours. Fallout but, 4 is pretty good if you can. Oh, actually, let me take that back. Fallout 4 is real hard. <laughs> it's real hard it, right it from has, the start. Fallout 4 has a bunch of difficulty spikes. Uh, you know what's funny is how Fallout 4 didn't like make a lot of game of the year list even though like it sold so well and the hype oh, and was there. people were waiting for it for years and years and years right yeah, yeah. the problem the, the why i kind of started stop playing it was it's it's just uncharted it's just uncharted it's just fallout 3.5 it's it's not that different than 3 and i played a lot of 3 and i played a not a lot of new vegas but new vegas was not as good as 3 i i liked fallout 4 a lot i just it just wasn't like I waited seven years, and this is all that's different. Well, it's new to me, and I enjoy it, but it's just really, really hard. Yeah. What was your favorite game last year? My favorite game of 2015. Yeah. What was the game that was like this? This was this was the game of year 2015. Uh. Well, I mean, I played Destiny the most. <laughs> I mean, so did I, but that's... I don't. I don't think that's. I don't think that's what made my 2015. Mm, wow. I mean, that's what I really played most of all of 2015. Shuffle? Uh, 
I mean, I play Shuffle every day. I pay, play Pokemon Rumble World every day. Now I play Picross every day. So, I mean, those are just like, it's it's almost like like my morning coffee is I, I can't get out of bed until I do my five rounds of Shuffle. I mean, li- I'm, I'm literal. I get up in the morning, make my coffee, get back into bed and play five rounds of Shuffle. I, I can't get my day started without it. But that's more like an addiction than and less of a game that you enjoy. Yeah. I mean, if uh, well, let's say you you could only pick like Shuffle or Destiny into 2016. Oh, I would play Destiny. All right, so then it's clearly. <laughs> I mean, because for me, Destiny is such a social thing, right? Even yeah. if I'm doing something dumb, I, I have people to talk to while I'm doing it and make jokes, and you know, I spend so much time alone that it's nice to have the opportunity to talk to groups of people and everything while playing Destiny. That's yeah. that's what it's all more. I'm really the gameplay of Destiny does not mean that much to me, and I'm not about achievements or anything like that. It's just the opportunity to hang out with my friends and talk. Yeah, and I think I think Destiny was easily my favorite game of 2014, and obviously, if you follow my tweets, it's I'm at almost 1,200 hours in Destiny. Uh, but prepping for other people's game of the year. I put 60 hours into Metal Gear Solid 5 and I wasn't near completing the story so I ended up sitting on YouTube actually on Monday night after Raw and I watched two straight three sorry three straight hours of like all the cutscenes and dialogue for the rest of Metal Gear I was like I'm it, so you mean you cheated <laughs> Yeah yeah uh um, I mean, when when you're with a series for you know over a decade, because obviously the fifth one, if you don't count uh, Portable Ops or was it Portable Ops, whatever the stupid PSP one that had the story, um, you want to know how it ends, right? No, that's true. That's true. And I and I knew I could finish the game, but I didn't have thirty hours before I was about to listen to all these podcasts that plan on arguing and spoiling the game's ending because they need to discuss which is going to be game of the year but once man once i found out the ending of that game i'd like now that is what what that is what's making me probably go back to it this week to play it um but that's easily like that game is what made my 2015 like i enjoyed everything i've played in it but now to see the ending and how that story kind of wrapped up, it was like this this was what I'll remember. And obviously Destiny, I played a lot, but yeah, you saw five. I put a part. lot of time into um like Persona three and Persona Four. And those games, like, they should be a natural appeal for me. I, I like the sort of mythos or whatever of what they're trying to portray about reality and stuff. It's just the story moves so slowly and the gameplay is so, so difficult with no instructions and no guidance that it was just impossible for me to get into. And I, I mean, I spent maybe like 30 hours between Persona 3 and Persona 4 trying to get into it. And I just... I need somebody to like sit there and hold my hand and get me through those games that at least get me up to speed. So I understand what I'm doing because it's, it's so, and and, you know, what's funny is you'll say to people like, Oh, I'm having difficulty with persona. Can you just give me some basic explanations of what to do? And the immediate answer you get is, well, it's a standard JRPG. So just do the kinds of things you, I've never played a JRPG (laughs) before. I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, you've never ran around in the same area and battled the same things. I suppose Pokemon would kind of be that, except it is so basic compared to quote unquote JRPGs like Final Fantasy or whatever else stuff you would play from Japan. You whatever. What was that game that you loved that I thought was awful? Um, did that come out in 2015? Where it was like the black and white thing. It was made by the same people who make Final Fantasy. Black and white made by Final... I don't like a lot of games made by Square Enix. It's it's coming out with a sequel. Um, Bravely Default. Oh, Bravely. Yeah, Bravely Default is... uh, No, that came out last year. Last year was 2015. 
uh, last year as in 2014 because uh, I was playing uh, that when I was still in my apartment. Um, oh, all right, all right. That was 2014. I like that game a lot. I never finished it. I put 40 hours into it. Uh, it's fine. Uh, it was good. Yeah, but yeah, you're right. It's a JRPG. So we d- we didn't answer the question, but we did talk about a lot of different games that. <laughs> that well, we I mean, the question was, play. what do you do besides play Pokemon? Uh, I try to play different games and then yeah. I get disappointed in them and I put them down. I and and Steve and I always have this argument. I like I love the PS Vita hardware and I keep hoping to find a game besides Katamari Damacy that's on the Vita hardware that will make me use it more, but the games that come out for the Vita are just very disappointing, but I, I just I love that hardware. I know Steve hates it, but it just doesn't feel good in my hands. Well, I I don't know if my hands are too small or too big. But, but anytime I travel, I take my Vita with me and I, I try to play something on it. Um, and they, I mean, they have a lot of downloads for old titles and things. I I, ugh, I keep I have so much hope for the Vita, and it <laughs> continually disappoints. But I still haven't lost hope in the Vita. Lost cause. You know what you can get on Vita? You can get uh, the Metal Gear Solid Collection, and you can start that journey. No, thank you. That is a game that I have no interest in. <laughs> um, all right, we'll do one more email. Uh, I didn't think uh, our answers would be so long, but we have. I'll, we'll do one more email. We have a bunch of emails, so if we didn't get to your email, uh, we will get to it next week because I, I really doubt we're going to get any Pokemon news um, in the next week here. Uh, so last email here, Dale writes in. I think Dale wrote in like two weeks ago. I think you're right. Hey there again, SBJ and crew. This is Dill from Utah, uh, and yes, I am the only Dill in Utah. I was enthralled when you guys read my email on a previous show, uh, see, uh, and proceeded to talk of about it for twenty minutes. I don't know what we talked about. I don't remember. I remember uh, Dill. I do remember Dill. Yeah, that's an I awesome thought of... name and a delicious pickle. <laughs> and he's the only one in Utah, clearly. Mm-hmm. Anyways, I was wondering if. Uh, You think since the 20th anniversary is also the 10th anniversary of Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, do you think TPCI will release Diamond and Pearl remakes? Also, Cheesecake is amazing. Long-time listener, Dill. Um, Many people love Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, but there has nowhere been anywhere near the call for remakes of those games as there were for Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. That's true. The answer is no. I I mean, I think, like all things Nintendo, everything gets remade. In some way, form, or fashion. But I think you're looking at, like, 2026 for that. You think 10 more years? 10 more years. Nah, I, w- I would argue that we would see Diamond and Pearl remakes in the next five. Easy. So you're, let's say you're saying 2021? Y- yes. There you go. 15th anniversary edition Diamond and Pearl remakes um, <laughs> for Pokemon Go. I I think the game this year will take us back to Kalos. Uh, or, been, or, or a region next to Kalos. I've been wrong before, but uh, I think that's going to get announced spring, come out fall, your standard Pokemon release schedule. And I think the free Pokemon that you get when you pick up the game will be uh, Volcanion or whatever. That oh, kind f- of like Victini was. Victini yep. is like the perfect Pokemon of all time. So, <laughs> hmm. yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think Diamond and Pearl. I don't think the the voice is there yet, nor the like. We just did Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. Sapphire let's pump out Diamond and Pearl. Like, I don't think, I don't think that. Like that would bring in new Pokemon fans or returning Pokemon fans. I feel like if if you've already returned to Pokemon by now, and I don't think Diamond and Pearl is like I'm not coming back till they they bring me Diamond and Pearl. Whereas like I feel like people who loved Omega, who love Ruby and Sapphire, they're like those are the best games. I can't wait. To, like they were the they were the irrational people that were waiting for the everyone who loves diamond and pearl are just completely ir- or not diamond and pearl ruby and sapphire are completely irrational they have no clue what they're talking about i probably offended half our audience but but also you can still play diamond and pearl in a 3ds that's true so there's no pressing need to 
remake them. And you can also transfer anything you catch in Diamond and Pearl up into yep. the current games. So there's really, really no pressing need to to recreate them. Yeah. I remember because Diamond and Pearl got me back into Pokemon because I skipped uh, I skipped Ruby and Sapphire like a lot of people my age did. And so I played Diamond and Pearl. I really liked Diamond and Pearl. Got me back into Pokemon. After Diamond and Pearl, I went back. I played Leaf Green, Fire Red. I played Ruby and Sapphire. And at the time, I was like, yeah, Ruby and Sapphire is not good. And obviously, if you've listened to the podcast, you know that's my opinion on the games. But as I was waiting for the next Pokemon game, I never like thought or wanted, like, I want a sequel to gold and silver like that was that never hit me and though that that is my favorite region is gold and silver because i like going on johto yeah i I just i I like johto uh i think the pokemon there are strong i like that there are two regions then why Uh, didn't you name your cat johto because because i just diamond and pearl brought me back sinnoh all right fine (laughs) So, like, I wasn't ever vocal or even thought about a remake to Johto. And then as soon as we got that, like, remake, everyone was like, a second remake? We need Ruby and Sapphire. They need justice. They didn't need justice. Nah. They were good. And I'm not saying Omega, Ruby, and Alpha Sapphire are not good. They're fine. There are some beautiful moments in those games. They're fine, but the the what Will said earlier, the voice, the people that were vocal, I don't think it and I don't think it was a lot. I don't think a lot of people wanted re, a remake of R- Ruby and Sapphire. Uh, I think no, th- enough people wanted a remake of Ruby and Sapphire that there were memes about it. The, and well, I know no, all those they were just have been forgotten. They were just the loudest. It's it's just like if you go to any subreddit of a specific topic, whether that I'm just going to use the two examples I go to the wrestling subreddit or the Destiny subreddit, and you have all these people that are like, "This is what's wrong with Destiny," or like Bungie needs to give me a 320 class item because they gave me a 320 ghost shell, they gave me a 320 artifact. I have no guaranteed way to get a 320 class item. And they get all these upvotes, and it's on the front page of the Destiny subreddit, and everyone's like, look, Bungie, this is number one on our subreddit. Fix it. And it's just irrational. It's why should they change a whole game to satisfy the one need you need currently? Because when you get that, you don't need anything else. There's nothing, like, then... Like they are serving one need that you want, and then people forget that the Destiny subreddit is less than ten percent of the Destiny community as a whole. So you have less than ten percent of hardcore fans complaining about a feature that only appeals to the people like me who put in over a thousand hours. Like it's so irrational, and you get that same. And people might disagree with me, but I'm under and still under the strong impression that the Ruby and Sapphire audience were just irrational, that they, for years, beat this drum of, we need a remake, we need a remake. And that drum started as soon as they saw Johto get remade. That's when they went all up in arms because they just thought that remakes were coming left and right. And yes, they got their remake, obviously. And you know what? They all shut up. You don't hear them talk about it. You don't hear them vocalize how great it is. They just got the game, and all those memes stopped. Everything subside. And there's not this vocal uproar for Diamond and Pearl. Because that audience that likes Diamond and Pearl, they came in. They were either people like me that came back. They were the first games they got. They're okay with it. You don't see Diamond and Pearl memes flying around. I don't know. I see the occasional Cynthia meme. (laughs) I think Cynthia in its own is far gone. She's a meme in herself. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, She could have been in any game and she would have taken off. Well, we're ending on a note that Steve still hates. So passionate. 
I mean, you're not right, but you're very passionate. So I mean, that's that's what if you say something with passion, well, people tend to agree with you. Is, is that a quote from The Simpsons? I don't think so. Mm. I just made it up there. It sounded good, didn't it? Yeah, pretty yeah. good. All right, we'll end on that. That's a good note. Uh, no Pokemon of the week. We are running over, and like I said, the uh, podcast next week. We'll probably throw Pokemon of the Week in there, and uh, we'll have, we have a bunch of emails still to go through. If you want to email me and uh, make me passionately rant about something, that is sbj at pkmncast.com, uh, and we can uh, I can rant about it. Will, where can they find you? Uh, usually on Twitter is the easiest thing to do, so just at Wash in the Sink, W-A-S-H-I-N-T-H-E-S-I-N-K. Do not ask me where I got that from or what it means because the story is so boring you will just regret asking where it came from. That's fair. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. It is at Dragging a Lake, and you can follow the podcast on Twitter at Pokemon Podcast. I think I've said this before, but if you ever wonder where the show is why it's late why it's not there why it's early uh podcast the pokemon podcast twitter is going to be the best place to find that and uh, i'm trying to make the ending shorter because uh, some people like to cut off the last 15 20 seconds because it's usually been the same routine so that's why i try to move stuff up in between the show surprise you guys uh but this has been another episode of the pokemon podcast and we are Super solid snakes. <laughs>